Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be another pregnancy update. I am officially 37 weeks now. And as I'm nearing closer and closer to my due date, I have noticed that things pretty much change on a weekly basis as far as symptoms and how I'm feeling. So I thought it'd be fun to update. So a few new like things have been popping up and I've kind of switched up a few different products to help with these symptoms. So I thought it might be useful for people to see how it, things are going towards the end of the pregnancy. I've also bought a lot of things for recovery. So I've done a ton of research on what women tend to use to recover from giving birth. And so I feel very prepared. So I kind of want to share those products with you guys. And I might do an update once I am actually recovering of what products work and what don't work. So if you're interested in seeing that, I will insert that at the end of the video. So yeah, like I said, I've noticed as I'm getting closer to my delivery day, um, I'm not scheduled for induction or anything. I'm having a very basic, healthy pregnancy. So um, a lot of my symptoms are changing or worsening. So as far as symptoms have been going, there are a couple of things that have popped up that I haven't been experiencing before. Um, so one of them is really random. So it probably happened a week ago. I was just out and about and I noticed my left eye just got droopy. Like it felt like my eyelid just got like a 10 pound weight onto it and it was just dragging down my face and it was kind of scary because I've never felt that. So I, obviously I called my doctor and they didn't really know what to tell me. My doctor is kind of frustrating because a lot of my symptoms, they're just like, eh, just see how it goes. Like they don't really ever have a solid answer for me. So that's kind of annoying, but uh, nothing else crazy has happened. It's just occasionally my left eye and I'll, you could kind of see it too. It's just like, a little bit drooped and it's just uncomfortable really but I could still move it I could still move my face I'm not losing like motor function or anything so they're not concerned about Bell's palsy because I said sometimes women do develop that towards the end but so far I think I'm okay it's just a new annoying symptom that I'm having other than that I've just been really tired so um, being out of breath and walking upstairs and exerting myself for more than one hour, I'm just so exhausted and so sweaty. I've been getting so sweaty and it's so uncomfortable because this is the time of year in San Francisco where it's kind of like summertime. So it's not even that hot outside. It's like 75, 80 degrees at most. And it's like beautiful sunny weather, but I'm just like, I am dying. I am sweating. Even wearing this shirt right now, I'm just like, oh, I wanna take this off. I'm like so hot and uncomfortable. And that might have something to do with my weight gain, but I mean, overall sweatiness and being hot and out of breath is a very normal symptom, but it's just getting a little bit much to deal with. So also I just wanna mention, as far as being hot and sweaty, my weight gain, I have gained a total so far of 25 pounds. So it seems like a lot, but all a lot of women that I've been talking to who are a little bit older than me or have had babies already have told me that I'm pretty lucky because they gain like 30, 40, 50 pounds, 60 pounds. So I do feel lucky and I've, for the most part, just been eating whatever I want. So I guess that's good, but I definitely feel the weight gain and think that has a lot to do with my sweatiness. Another symptom that I have pretty much on a daily basis now is acid reflux and heartburn. So before it would just happen once in a while, once a week, twice a week, but now it's pretty much every day. So I feel like that definitely has to do with the baby just growing and the position that he's in. He hasn't really dropped down that much, so I feel like that's probably why, but yeah, so that's been really uncomfortable. And as far as the heartburn symptom, there was one night and it was actually kind of scary. So I was sleeping 
like dead asleep and I woke up because I had thrown up in my mouth while I was sleeping and it was like it was so bad and it wasn't a lot of throw up so obviously it was like some kind of heartburn or something but oh my god I was like choking and I was just gagging and I was like oh my god like I could have died just choking on my throw up while I was sleeping it was like not cool and that was like the worst that it's been that only happened one time so yeah throwing up in my mouth while I was sleeping definitely was the cherry on top of my symptoms just becoming very uncomfortable and unmanageable almost um, other than that I feel okay and so I mean like I'm definitely not having a hard pregnancy by any means these are all very normal symptoms um, but it's just kind of crazy to deal with all of it all at once towards the end it just kind of all gets thrown at you so if you're pregnant and you're nearing close to the end just be prepared that any symptoms you might have had might get a little bit worse or a little bit more uncomfortable or a few new things may pop up for you so so also this kind of ties into new symptoms but also products that i'm using to help the symptoms so i've noticed in the last two weeks all of my skin and especially on my feet have just been extremely dry i just feel like the water is just being sucked out of all of my skin so yeah definitely another symptom is that my skin has been extremely dry probably just to do with the baby um, needing more water than usual and i've been trying to drink a lot of water but the feeling of my skin feeling really dry has just been really uncomfortable so i did end up switching back to apricot seed oil so this is what i had been using in the beginning of my pregnancy and i just really loved it i love this the most out of any body oil that i've used it just absorbs super fast and it's just super moisturizing and i just love using this so i bought a huge one um, so yeah, I really recommend trying this out if you have dry skin or you're trying to prevent stretch marks. This is an amazing oil. I also switched back to using Charity Pot by Lush. So this I originally didn't enjoy using because it's so thick and creamy and just really the thickness and I don't like really feeling sticky, but my skin has been so dry. It absorbs this faster than usual so if you are suffering from dry skin i recommend checking out any of these body butters and lotions from lush because it's natural it's healthy for your skin and it really helps fight dryness um on the opposite side of being dry um and i think it's just because i've been so sweaty my hair has been getting really oily in the roots so it's really not that healthy to wash your hair every single day and i think it's just because i've been so sweaty that it just kind of gets oily and just like even here i'm like sweating and like it's just not cute like i don't know so um i did try out this new dry shampoo so i'm pretty sure this is a new scent that they just came out with um, but this is in the fresh coconut scent and honestly this smells so much better to me than the original this works extremely well at absorbing any oils that i have in my hair i've really been loving this product so i definitely do recommend even if you're not pregnant and you just have oily hair on occasion this stuff smells so good and so light and it's not overpowering at all but it just gives you a nice fresh kind of like clean smell and it takes away a lot of the oils in your hair also something that i've been dealing with is getting a little bit swollen so i've noticed if i have especially when i eat salty foods my feet and my hands and kind of like a little bit around my jawline and my neck gets a little bit puffy and especially I've been seeing puffiness under my eyes and you could probably tell in this video too my eye bags are just been like crazy so I did get two eye creams that actually if I don't use these it looks a lot worse than this so that's kind of crazy but these two eye creams are really helping me out right now so first I got the Dior Capture Total eye cream 
So this is really just a multi-use eye cream. It's not specifically designed for puffiness, but it definitely helps reduce puffiness for sure because my eyes, once I started using this, I noticed even the next day, it just looked a lot more even and just a lot more moisturized and less crazy looking. So I really do love this product. Also, I just recently got the Lemur, the Eye Balm Intense. This is a super hydrating eye cream, and I feel like this helps a lot more than the Dior. It's also a little bit more expensive, but definitely I've noticed a difference. It's just super nice and creamy, and it absorbs really quickly just really been enjoying this eye cream so these two definitely are helping me feel a little bit more like myself and not like a puffy mess of a person so i definitely recommend splurging on things that will help you feel better about yourself because being pregnant is really hard and it's a really crazy thing to go through so little things like this make me feel a little bit better so i definitely recommend anyone else who feels a little bit like garbage just splurge a little bit on yourself it's worth it in the end so i guess that's it as far as products and symptoms and craziness that has been happening um i will show you an updated belly shot because it definitely grew i'm definitely getting bigger and um up to this point i had no stretch marks at all but i think that i am developing one where my belly button piercing scar is so it might just be the scar stretching out it might be a stretch mark either way it's not the worst thing in the world but i will go ahead and show you guys feels like a bowling ball literally is just parked inside of my stomach so like i said i am getting kind of like a dark red spot above my belly button there is the scar that goes across that way but for the most part it doesn't bother me that much. It's not that bad. I've also started getting a dark line that's been going up, which I hear is normal, so. Also, while I'm sitting up, I just wanna show you guys um, the kind of shirts that I've been loving, and I get these at Forever 21. So these are actually sold as um, mini dresses, and it's crazy because it fits me perfectly like a shirt. So these are super stretchy, super cheap, and super comfortable. So I believe they're all around like $10, but it's fall now, so they have a bunch of new colors, new arm lengths, and everything. So if you're pregnant in the fall season, I definitely recommend checking out Forever 21. So I literally just placed, this isn't even all of them because some of them are dirty, like I just placed a huge order. Some of them are longer than others and I can wear them as dresses, but the ones that are listed as like mini dresses fit perfectly as shirts when you're in your third trimester. So uh, I definitely recommend checking out Forever 21. It's just been a lifesaver because even buying maternity shirts, I feel like it's just not, it doesn't fit me the right way. It's a little bit loose, like around like the boob to the belly area. And it just, it's not flattering. I like to show off my belly a little bit. So these just fit perfectly. They hug in the right places and they're not maternity. So once I deliver, I can still wear these once I, shrink back down a little bit so i definitely thought that was worth mentioning to you guys if you didn't already know forever 21 has perfect body con dresses that fit like shirts also um i did get a 4d scan so i set up an appointment at a specialty ultrasound place it wasn't my regular doctor um the only thing was i went when i was 35 weeks and i think that's a little bit too long of a time to wait because he's already face down and kind of smushed against the wall of my placenta so it's harder to see his features so I recommend if you want to do a 40 ultrasound to do it a little bit earlier maybe 30 to 32 weeks because they'll still have a little bit more space in your stomach and you'll be able to see more but I'll go ahead and insert a picture 
we just got a little bit of his face and it was super exciting and I do recommend getting that done because it's pretty much once in a lifetime especially if you're impatient like me and you kind of want to see what your baby's gonna look like <laughs> So I guess that's it for my pregnancy update. I'm just gonna quickly go over the things I bought for recovery. If you guys are interested in seeing that, just keep watching. Otherwise, yeah, that's it. That is how I'm feeling and everything new up to 37 weeks. I do have my next appointment next Thursday. So I will be 38 weeks when I go in for my next appointment. And um, we're really just discussing my birth plan and stuff like that so pretty excited it's getting to the end of the line i am very excited and very close and ready to just have this baby and feel normal again so as far as recovery goes i did mention this in my hospital bag video but i heard a lot of great things about these always discreet boutique Pads. So these are basically adult diapers, but it's kind of marketed as a pad. It's just a super absorbent pad. And I heard that these are very, very comfortable, especially if you rip or have stitches or tear or all of the above. These are not that abrasive against your very sensitive areas and some women like these more than the mesh panties that the hospital provides so i did just pick up one pack of these i'm gonna see if they work for me i will let you guys know but i've heard a lot of great things about these so the next two things that i have purchased for the down there area i got a package of these pre-moistened witch hazel pads so i heard that you just put these inside of your underwear or inside of your pad and you just let it soak in to any area that is inflamed or hurting so witch hazel in general is just very anti-inflammatory anti-redness healing it's just so good for your skin when you are trying to heal so these, I heard, were just super convenient, already pre-moistened, no mess. You just put them in and it helps you feel a little bit better. So I'm excited to try those out. I also heard really good reviews about this Earth Mama Herbal Perennial Spray. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but um, yeah, this just has really amazing reviews. It is mainly witch hazel, but if you don't like the moistened pads this is just a spray version of that basically but it does have other ingredients in it like cucumber extract organic lavender and peppermint leaf oil so it's just super refreshing super anti-inflammatory and it's just supposed to help the healing process in general I will link this down below. You guys could read the reviews for yourself. It has amazing reviews. So I am excited to try that. I'm basically just anticipating that I will tear because I don't know. I just, <laughs> I feel it in my bones. So I am stocking up on things that I feel like will help me. So hopefully this will. I'll let you guys know if it ends up working for me or not. So that is it as far as like the down there area. Um, I am prepared for breastfeeding as well. Um, I'm hoping that I don't have trouble. My milk has already, well, not my milk, but something is already happening and coming in and leaking a little bit. So I'm kind of anticipating that hopefully I won't have any problems breastfeeding. You never know though, but I did get things to prepare for that. So I did purchase the Lanoish, Lanoish, I don't know how to pronounce this. It's the Stay Dry Nursing Pads. So these are disposable. While I was researching, I heard that the disposable nursing pads are a lot easier and just a lot less mess and stress than using reusable pads. So obviously I, I like the idea of using reusable nursing pads, so I did purchase some as well but these have better reviews and with everything that I've been researching, women just tend to like these a lot better than reusable pads. So 
I did get a box of these. I also did order online. It's also from the Earth Mama brand, the same one as the spray that I got. It's organic nipple butter. So this is a buttery and botanical rich. So it moisturizes dry skin. It's organic and it doesn't have any kind of bad additives in it. So you don't have to wash it off before you begin breastfeeding, which I thought was really convenient and really nice. So I'm excited to try this. Also has really good reviews. I also heard that when your milk comes in, it hurts like a bitch. So I did stock up my freezer with these ice packs so i did just order a bunch of these on amazon and they're just the gel ice packs so they're reusable they're mushy and i heard that using these on your boobs when they're in pain actually does help a lot so i figured it was worth mentioning that i stocked my freezer with these so I'll let you know if that helps me at all but I have it just in case. So the last thing that I bought for recovery, it's not really recovery, it's more of just motherhood in general. I did get one of these, um, it's not a breast pump, but it catches expressed breast milk, especially while you're breastfeeding. I heard that if you're breastfeeding one side, the other one tends to leak as well. So this just helps catch and not waste any breast milk. It has really good reviews and I know that there's a really popular brand, I think it's like Hakka or something that sells these. This is a different brand. I will link it down below where I bought it from, but it's essentially the same thing. It's just small, discreet, and it has like, you can squeeze it a little bit to suction it on. I'm very excited to try it. So yeah, I guess that's it for this pregnancy update and recovery and products and everything that I'm using. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.